son como las semanas que vienen. Si no tenía ni idea de la ¿Nunca te has dicho? No hay fiebre, no sé. Bueno, eso con la Claudia creo que hace. No digo con la Claudia, no, el, 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 el ciclo para el eh, Carlos también es eh, bueno para los días después de darse la vida. Vamos a darle cinco días. Yeah, you know, as, as parents of three, we're kind of, we kind of, showed up yet and so I was waiting for that but we can go ahead and get started I think now at 2:10, uh, even on Ecuadorian time we're okay yes yeah. all right okay and we do have a lot to get through so estamos bien no necesitamos and if there is any any specific question that may not have been picked up in English I am perfectly fine to help uh, help it be explained into Espanol okay all right any questions do, do we might I don't know why but it's weird for me that the doors are open is it is it okay if we close them Sorry, not to trap you all in here. So you are here for sibling non-rivalry or siblings without rivalry, correct? Which makes me think, or which makes me assume anyways, that everyone in here probably has at least two kids. Because if it's, and if, and if you don't have two kids, perhaps, perhaps your child has a lot of con uh, um, contact with other kids that are family, cousins, or somebody that they, they have a lot of contact with often. That would also be okay. But if you only have one kid, and you have nobody else in your neighborhood that your kid plays with, then get out of here. We don't <laughs> then you do not know what you're dealing with. I'm sorry, I'm, just, I'm just teasing. No, no, we aren't here to talk about, uh, we're here to talk about rivalry. Rivalry being the word that is when, when our kids just argue with each other, or when they compete for our attention, uh, or when they constantly ask us for something, or 
tattle on their sister or their brother. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to go over five uh, topics mainly. Um, all the information we're, we're talking about today that I will be talking about comes from the book Siblings Without Rivalry, which I brought with me today in case anybody would like to look at it, like to take a picture. They can Amazon uh, find it somewhere. Um, I'm not sure. I'm sure this, the version is in Spanish somewhere, if you're preferring Spanish. I just don't know where to get it here. I purchased this in the States. Um, but this is a follow-up to the book, uh, how to talk to kids. So, excuse me. How to how to talk to kids. So how to talk so kids will listen, and how to listen so kids will talk. Uh, which was also a, a PTSA uh, presentation that we gave a year ago. So this is sort of the second part or the second version written by the same folks that wrote the first book. Um, and it's really just it's sort of again the second version being just more goes more in depth about how do we talk so kids will listen to us when there's multiple children. Right, so when we have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with us, that's the first book. Now we're dealing with a one-on-one -on -one conversation when another child is competing for that attention too. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Also uh, today, normally when I do my presentations, I do a lot of talking, and any of your children who have were in second through fifth grade will probably tell you, "Oh yeah, Mr. Sam really likes to talk when we're in class." But today is going to be a very big. Um, participation. So I'm going to ask people to come up and model what we're doing today and what we're going to talk about um, because a lot of what the book does is, is model these sorts of um, situations when you see two kids fighting over a certain toy, how do we intervene as parents. So I'm going to ask that you actually come up and participate. If you prefer to do this in Spanish, that's completely fine, um, but I will need a lot of participation. So eat up, but then but then put your food to the ground, please, because I'm going to ask for people to come up and volunteer throughout the entire uh, group. And I have I have role plays for you to do, but, be, um, but all you have to do is just read. So you don't have to come up with your own scenario or anything like that. It's just modeling what we're talking about during the presentation. All right? So I love this quote, because if you know any, uh, any friends, family members, uh, who don't have kids and whoever tried to tell you how to parent or give you advice, even perhaps a parent of your own that has tried to give you advice, uh, I myself was this guy, right? I was a counselor for years before I became a parent. And I thought, why don't you just do this? It's easy. <laughs> and I became a parent. And then I realized, no, you can't, you can't talk to parents like that. So now when I give parent presentations, I love to interact and share my own stories of my four-year-old, my seven-year-old, and my nine-year-old, and how they interact with one another, and how exhausted I am after every single day I put them to bed. Uh, so we'll include that. But I do still love the quote because I was an exceptional, a perfect parent, a model parent before I had kids. <laughs> uh, so before we get started into the real presentation, I just want to throw this out here. Uh, the book starts with this lovely, um, this lovely analogy. So you you have a child, right? You have a child. You're thinking. You're thinking with your partner. Man, you know, this is pretty okay. Like I can handle this. Maybe we should have another kid. Now, normally as parents, we don't talk with our child and ask them, "Would you like to have another child? Would you like to have a brother or sister?" Usually, as parents, we choose we are or, or not going to have children. But imagine this. <clears throat> One day, you're at home, you're eating dinner, you're having a lovely dinner. Your spouse walks in, sits down with you at dinner, eats with you at dinner. They say to you, puts their arm around you, honey, I love you so much. This is going so well. I love you. You're so wonderful. I think I've decided to have another spouse. <laughs> I'd like to bring another spouse into the, into the household, okay? So imagine now, nine months later, another spouse comes into your household, okay? I have these lovely scenarios. What I'd like you to do is I need some volunteers to go ahead and read them out loud and then discuss how you might feel if this happened in your household. Would any, I need five people from your seat that would just be willing to read this scenario, this situation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Thank you very much. So the person who has reaction number one, could you please just simply read what you, uh, what you have written there for you? Sure. When the new wife finally arrives, <laughs> you see that she's very young and kind of cute. <laughs> pretty frustrated. Yeah. What do you think, Miss Kathy? What, how are you feeling as, as you have a new wife that's prettier and younger and, and it's just so gorgeous? I would be very jealous and, and I want that love too. What go. happened to the love for me? That's a good question. We'll talk about that. What does happen to the love for us when there's a new spouse or a new sibling that comes into the house? Uh, number two, if, number two, okay. please read. The new wife needs clothing. Your husband goes into your closet, <laughs> takes some of your sweaters and pants, and gives them to her. When you protest, he points out that since you put on a little weight, your clothes are too tight on you, and they'll be her forever. <laughs> How are you feeling about this situation? I would feel like right. killing him. Yes! I, thank you for your candidness. Candidness. I would feel like killing him. Yeah. <laughs> or or the sim or the new wife. Yeah. Like you you have now this this sense of rage against this newcomer, against this new person that just joined our family, who's taking all our clothes and all our attention and all our love. Right? Number three. Number three, please. Uh, yeah, it's right here. Um, and feel free to switch it, obviously, the words. <laughs> no, no, right. I'll keep it over. All right. <laughs> wife is maturing rapidly. Every day she seems smarter and more competent. One afternoon as you're struggling to figure out the directions on the new computer your husband bought you, she bursts into the room and says, oh, can I use it? I don't know how. <laughs> William, how are, what do you think? How are you feeling about this? Uh, hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm so far, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not the jealous type, so maybe okay. I'm not the right person to react to this. Okay. But um, I guess a, a little bit jealous, maybe. Sure. It, and that one's not quite necessarily as strong as a couple of the other ones, right? So, yeah, this one's but good. but it's definitely that feeling of like, but this is my new computer. This is my new toy. Why is my little sibling or my new wife or new husband coming in and trying to say that they know how to play with it and they want the time with, to play with it, right? All right? Number four. When you tell her she can use it, she runs crying to her husband. Months later, she returns with him. Her face is tear-stained. And he has him around. He says to you, what would be the harm in letting her have a turn? Why can't you share? <laughs> Obviously, these scenarios are very chistoso. So they're very funny to think about yeah. in this way. And, and they're not the exact feeling that our kids are going to have when a new sibling arrives. But some of them, some of our kids do feel that way. Yeah. Do really, truly feel like, man, this kid is taking my stuff. This kid is, is skinnier than me and taking my, new cl my old clothes, is taking my new toys, is taking all the attention, right? So a lot of this rivalry comes from that feeling that they're here. Last one. One day, you find your husband and the new wife lying on the bed together. He's tickling her, tickling her and she's giggling. Suddenly, the phone rings and he answers it. After a while, he tells, um, he tells you that something important has come up and he must leave immediately. He asks you to stay home with the new wife and make sure he's all right. Payback time. Yeah. <laughs> you get a few hours alone with a new wife. How are you feeling? I don't know. Uh, um, jealous yeah. about the attention that she's receiving and not me. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. 
So I wanted to start with that because it gives us a good idea about, man, the feeling that my child must have when I brought in a new child, at least it gives us a, a starting point, right? So I, 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 again, I have three children at my house, um, and, and not just the older one has rivalry with the younger one, because obviously the younger ones also pressure and, and put uh, frustration on the older ones as well. So it's not, it's not really to, to tell you that only your oldest child will ever have any difficulties. It's really just to get you in that space of like, oh, okay, this might be why my child sometimes does this. They bicker. They have these dish difficulties. So the five topics we're going to talk about today, and again, I won't talk a lot. I'm going to let you guys do um, some more role playing. But number one, we talk about and, and acknowledge feelings, right? So we always have to start with helping siblings to understand and express their feelings for each other. Sometimes this is hard uh, as working adults or as a, a parents of multiple children with multiple responsibilities uh, that we just want to sort of like, all right, yeah, 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 okay, fine. For example, today, my own daughter uh, here in school uh, told me, came up to me during lunch, I have three other things going on. Kids are coming up to me. And, and my own child comes up and says, Papi, my tummy hurts. Ah, uh, go to the nurse. What do you want me for? I, I'm, not, I'm not even here. I'm, I may be your father, but I'm your counselor, so leave me alone. Did that help her out in that situation? No. No, no she saw her father. She wanted to come up, and she wanted to say, Papi, me duele. I didn't do a good job. So I know that even as parents, we might, you know, have a lot going on. But if I were to acknowledge her feelings and simply say, ay, mija, pobrecito, like, why don't I walk you to the doctor or whatever, obviously that would, that would give her a little bit more feeling of like, ah, I got listened to, which is what she was looking for, right? So those, those again, I'm not an expert. I'm simply here to pass along some information from people. I myself am a father of three that make a lot of mistakes, right? So we're going to talk about lots of things today. But the first thing I think is really important is to acknowledge our kids' feelings. Right? Not just about their stomachs, but about each other, about how they might be feeling when the new toy comes in and their little brother, little sister comes in and want to play with it, or the older brother uh, is having a play date and the younger one wants to get in. Right? It's important to acknowledge feelings. And sometimes it's easy for us as parents with our busy lives to want to dismiss it. Right? And I, just as the example I gave you about my own child two hours ago, uh, it's important for us to understand, wow, I I need to stop for just 10 seconds, acknowledge this feeling, understand what's going on, and be able to move to the next step, right? The second thing we're going to talk about is helping our children uh, to stay separate, and I'll explain that a little bit more, and unequal, right? Our kids have different needs, okay? Uh, so it's not our role to, uh, to say, well, if I spent uh, two hours with one child, then I have to spend the exact same two hours with the other child. We all understand that. As a baby, they're going to need a lot more attention and a lot more time than with our 10-year-old, right? We can all understand that as parents. Kids don't always get that. So we have to help explain why our time with them is unequal, right? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about roles and how easy it is for us as parents to place our kids in roles. My child in second grade is, a, is an incredible artist, but if I start only talking to him about how wonderful he is at art, then my nine-year-old and my four-year-old are going to start thinking, well, if he's the artist, why, why even draw? What's the point of doing anything art-related because it's never going to compare to this kid who can do these amazing things, right? So if we play into that, then what are our kids thinking about how we feel about them? So we're going to talk about siblings and roles, and we're not the only people that do that, right? Our, our, uh, our kids put themselves in roles. They put each other in roles. So we're going to talk a little about how we can... Uh, converse with them, how we can talk with them to try and delineate that role, okay? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about when our kids fight. Do any of your children fight with each other? <laughs> oh, good. oh, good. Well, I'm glad you're here. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, and then a final review, just some last-minute tips and advice um, before we head out. So the first one is about helping siblings deal with their feelings, Okay. And feelings about each other. Like I said, um, today my daughter, was her tummy was hurting. But it really is true about her feelings for her brother, her feelings for her sister, um, and about how we express that. So if we don't acknowledge these things, if we don't put feelings into words, um, then we're not acknowledging her feelings, right? And this is, again, this is sort of really what, what I do as a counselor is to mirror what my child might be saying. 
right? So if my child comes up and says, it's not fair that my sister got two hours of television today. Oh, so you're feeling frustrated because when... Yeah, that's what... Yeah, that's exactly why I'm frustrated, right? So we just put whatever they're expressing to us, sometimes not in the most adult way, not in the most mature way, right? Some, my sister's so mean because she, she knocked over my Lego set. So you're saying that your sister, who's only four, doesn't know how to play with Legos, and that frustrates you. Yes, that's what I'm saying, right? So sometimes we have to interpret what they're saying into adult language and, and revert it back to them in, in, in expressing feelings, right? Uh, express what a child might wish. So sometimes we might hear our children uh, bickering or fighting and saying things like, uh, man, I wish I could just punch him in the nose because he makes me so angry, right? <laughs> So how do we then interpret that and then translate it back to our child so that it's, ah, so you're feeling really frustrated. So frustrated that you have this feeling you would want to hurt somebody. Wow, that is a lot of frustration, right? Here at school, we talk about zones. We talk about the red zone, yellows. Wow, you're in the red zone right now because you're just feeling so out of control with what's going on with you. Yeah, that's right. I do wish I could do that. Well, you know you can't. But I can understand why you would want to after what happened, right? Helping them to express a wish they might have. Um, encouraging creative expression. This talks about, well, gosh, you know you can't hit your brother in the nose because that would lead to problems, and I don't want that to happen. But, man, is there something else you could do? Some kind of way to get out this frustration or this anger that doesn't hurt anybody? So finding a way for them to be able to creatively express what they're feeling, right? And then helping them to better way, um, show better ways to express their anger. Finding alternatives, finding strategies that might help them, whether it's pushing a wall, whether it's taking good deep breaths, whether it's talking about it, taking a break from their sibling, but helping them find productive ways to express their anger. So this is where I'm going to ask for three volunteers that would be willing to come up and do a little role play. Again, it's all scripted for you. Super easy stuff. <laughs> I just need three volunteers. One, yes, please. Oh. Thank you, Cheryl. One other, please. All right. So we have we have one mom. Who would like to be the mom? All right. <laughs> and what we're gonna do is gonna talk about how yes. And then just a little bit. One of you will pretend to be a baby. All right, so you just pretend, you can even pull up another chair and then sit, you know, pretending to be in your mom's arms. All right. So, I have one sheet, so you're all going to look the same sheet, but what we're doing right now, instead of, uh, so try this first, so the, you will come up, complain, mom, and then, and then we're going to, we're going to do, so you'll start with this, this is the wrong way to do it, this is the right way to do it, so I'll, so we do first the right one and then the wrong one, or just yes, you don't really you just maybe cry a little bit or coo coo with mommy, right? You're always with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds familiar. <laughs> no, I'm not. Didn't I just read to you? So this that would be a, that would be a way of not expressing, not acknowledging the feelings, right? She simply said, "My complaint is you're always with a baby. It's never it's never my turn." Mom dismisses the feeling, says, whatever, I just gave you like 10 minutes of reading time. Mm -hmm. We're not acknowledging the original concern. Right. Try it round two. Not the right way. Yes. Mm -hmm. I guess I would still say, you're always with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the baby needs to be louder. Yeah, what um, you don't like my spending so much time with her. Right? So again, she interprets, she acknowledges, I understand you don't like me spending so much time with her. And then the, the child is probably going to say, yeah, that actually is how I'm feeling. So we acknowledge how they're feeling. I'm going to do a second, second, uh, this one. So that is expressing or putting feelings into words, right? She's now you're changing me. Okay. So we're not dismissing. And then again, you I'm can changing her diaper. Just, just the top one is confused. Yeah. Send Pretend. the baby back. You don't mean that. You know you love her. So again, dismissing the feelings altogether doesn't allow Miss Cheryl to understand that she's been hurt, right? It just 
continues the problem. Then she still feels resentment toward the baby. She doesn't feel any love from mom. Right? Try round two. Send the baby back. You don't want her here. Sometimes you wish, you wish she would go away. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Am I big or am I sad right. sheep? I don't know. <laughs> now we're going to move on to uh, helping the student or the child um, channel their hostile feelings into different outlets by creative expression. Okay, now she's trying to um, grab oh, one of the toys. I'm in the playpen. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Break her arm? You're a bad boy. <laughs> so again, you see, you see your baby and the older child. The older child tries to come in and, and you know try to take one of the baby's things, and you step in and see it. Why are you making the baby cry? What are you? You're a bad kid. What's wrong with you? Right? Not expressing the real concern would led to the older child trying to take the baby's toy. Round two. Um, I said, no hurting your sister. You can show me your feelings with your doll. So, wow. yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. There's other options too. But no, the idea with this is, is to find a more creative way. You're frustrated with your sister. I get it. Like, you don't want her here. You, I acknowledge you don't want her here. How can you express yourself instead of taking it out on her in a different way? Take your doll. Take your doll for a walk, right? So, find a different way uh, to express. Your child's feelings. My line never changes. <laughs> now she's, she's playing with some blocks. And I, wait, I, think, and I think you're oh, just come on, going sorry. to check her. Let, let's do this properly. I'm like this. So I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. But. Once again. <laughs> That's a nasty thing to do to the baby. She only touched your blocks. Again, not, not acknowledging, really diminishing the feelings of the first child, the older child, and, uh, and not, just not helpful. And the right way it says, <laughs> no punching. Tell your, tell your sister how angry you are with words, not fists. Stay away, stay away from my clock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So in the third scenario, or in the, in the second uh, option, the, the correct option, again, you're looking for an alternative, giving your child uh, an idea about something else you can do to express yourself, yourself rather than hurt your little sister or little brother, right? Thank you very much. So once again, we're going to need more volunteers, so be ready. If you haven't gone up yet, I will be calling them. So once again, uh, the feelings portion is really just to focus on how do we make sure to acknowledge our kids' feelings. There's different situations that come up throughout the day that our kids are going to come to us, complain, that we might walk into them uh, arguing or fighting. The important thing is that we, we start with acknowledging the feelings. We, we express, wow, I understand that you're feeling this way. Okay, you want your brother to be gone. Man, that must be a really strong feeling, right? Again, thinking back to that feeling that we had when our new wife or our new husband walks in and steals all of our clothes and all of our attention, feeling that way, thinking that way, oh, I do want my feelings to be acknowledged. If my husband or my wife, when I said, why are you letting them take my clothes? And all he said was, get over it. You don't even fit in them anymore. <laughs> Again, that's not helpful, right? So we express, uh, we, we acknowledge our feelings first and foremost before we go anywhere. All right, this is where we talk a little bit about uh, how we can sometimes accidentally compare, right? So sometimes when we are talking with our kids, uh, and again, as a, as a father, uh, I have done this several times, Mika, your brother already did his chore. Why haven't you even started yet? Right? So, so easily during our day when we're in the midst of lots of things, we can easily just interject, oh yeah, but your brother did this already. How come you can't clean up your room like your brother? Right? So easy is it for us to be able to do that. Or, or sometimes they do it to themselves, right? Well, I already cleaned up my portion. 
but my brother hasn't or my sister hasn't done their portion, how come I always get stuck with it, right? So how easy it is for us to get into this idea where we compare uh, our kids within any random thing that happens throughout the day. Why haven't you finished your food yet? Everybody else is done. All of a sudden, that kid starts to feel like, whoa, I'm always the last to eat, or I'm always the slowest, or I'm never the organized one, right? So we want to treat each child as their own unique self, rather than pull in somebody else and say, and, and the same thing would be true if it was a coworker, right? How would you feel if your boss uh, comes in and observes you and says, yeah, you know, it's just not very good. I was watching uh, Gertrude the other day, and the way that she did her job was just stupendous. Can't you just be more like her? You would feel, I mean, that's not, that's not helpful. You're just simply comparing and making that person feel even lower, right? So how often do we do this as parents where we kind of add somebody? So the idea is to, to change that technique and then just go unique. Like, these are the specific things when I observe your classroom, or these are the things when we're eating, buddy, you got to eat a little bit more quickly, okay? Stop focusing on the toy that's next to you and eat. Or you haven't done your chore yet, Miko. Uh, we need to make sure to, to go, you need help with that, whatever it is, but focus on that one child and don't bring somebody else into it to compare them, right? Because then all of a sudden, that's where more bickering starts, then they go to their room and then one says, yeah, Papi told me that you didn't even do your chore today, <laughs> right? All of a sudden, they take those two words that we said <laughs> and just pull them out of proportion, right? And then the other part is, is loving each child uniquely or, or unequally. Right? Because some kids need more love in certain ways. Uh, some kids need more support in certain ways. It doesn't mean that we love them, uh, excuse me, it doesn't mean that we love them less. It just means we love them for them. We love them uniquely. We love them for their attributes, for their characteristics, without comparing them to their brother or sister. Right? I love that you can get up early in the morning, that you wake up, that you're responsible for getting your chores done right away, that you read every night without being told. I love that about you, without bringing your brother into it, right? And I love you, Miko, for being able to be such an artistic and creative young man. And I love that you can do this, this, and this, and I don't have to ask you to do it. It's so amazing that you can do that for you yourself, right? We don't have to add that extra part in. Well, your coworker does a really good job at that, but you're good at this. Does it help? <laughs> so, I will need uh, two volunteers this time. Can I get two? One, thank you. Yes? All right. So. You always look so beautiful. Your sister looks as if she gets dressed in the dark. Mom loves me the best. So that's a thought bubble, right? Ah. She's, this is, sorry, sorry, I should have explained. This is mom, this is, yeah. this is daughter. They have it, there's another child. Yeah. Mom, mom says the daughter, you like... always look so beautiful. Your sister looks like she gets dressed in the dark. <laughs> and so she's not saying out loud, but she's thinking to herself. Mom loves me the best. Okay. Right? So that's the way that doesn't help. Right? When we, when we, so, and it comes often so naturally, unfortunately, right? Man, you look so gorgeous. Man, you, you know you know how to do your hair. You dress yourself, no problem. I'm like your sister who just seems to get out of bed and doesn't even care about their parents, right? But the feeling that that other child might get is so easily like, all right, like I'm looking good. My brother or my sister is nothing compared to me. Mom loves me. Just not helpful. Try this instead. I like the way the lavender in the blues pick up the purple in your skirt. I'm good at coordinating colors. I'm so good at coordinating colors. Perfect. She describes uniquely for her what's so great about her outfit today. Rather than comparing, not bringing anybody else into it, she simply compliments her. Oh, you look really great today. I love how you match your colors. She internalizes. Mom, ex like, mom acknowledges that I know how to do something well without any word about her sister. <laughs> This is the wrong way to do it, right? Sorry, yeah. This is the wrong way. Don't you dare call me glow. Your sister never talks, talks to me like that way. Everything I do is 
wrong. Everything she does is right. Yes, sorry. That was the incorrect way. Incorrect way. The now correct. we try the right way. It's hard for me to be... Okay, it's hard, it's hard for me to be helpful when I'm being criticized. <laughs> I better watch what I say. You read? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's hard for me. I better watch what, what I say. Alright, so again, thank you very much. Well done. <laughs> sorry, for our sorry. Volunteers. So I, I just copied this not, not too many hours ago, and instead of blowing them up, I just left them this tiny little pieces. So for those of you who are volunteering, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, once again, it's so important to define or describe what the... So in the second one, it was more about a problem that came up, right? So it's helpful to describe the problem, again, not pulling somebody else in, not comparing, not adding anybody else, but just to uniquely demonstrate your... Uh, love or your compliment for that one individual, right? So we're individualizing what we do with our kids. I need a couple more volunteers though. We are now going to talk about how equal is less and unequal can actually be more. Thank you. One more. Mommy will be there for me. Right? 
simply, again, she acknowledges my feeling. She, she understands it. Thank you very much. Thank you both. In other words, again, going back to un, or equal can is not less, but unequal can be more, right? Instead of giving just equal time, right now we're planning for the older daughter's party. It's important. We don't want to dismiss the time that's needed to plan a party, um, but it's also important to acknowledge a younger brother's feelings that he wants some time too with mom, um, and so it's important to really express and, and acknowledge the importance of the time that's needed right now. But when you need me, I will also be there for you. When it's your time to have all that. Okay. Just looking at time to make sure we have that. All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about roles, how easy it is for us as parents to place our kids in roles. I mentioned earlier how my child is very artistic. I also have a very responsible child, and I have a third child, which I don't know what, I, don't know what else to say about that, but she is our third child. Uh, so I know as a parent, I, in my head, I have put my kids in roles, like responsible, artistic, creative, and the third child. <laughs> to be fair, I am a third child, so. Uh, so take with that you'd like to know. Uh, so it's easy for us to place our kids in roles even without trying to, right? And how easy it is, just like comparing, how we can just insert that in very quickly. But our kids are doing it at the same time. So it's important to acknowledge, even if we were just perfect parents and never put our kids in roles, they find themselves doing that. How come I'm also one cleaning up? You're, my brother never does anything. He's so disorganized. How come I'm so creative? When my sister doesn't even know how, like, or she, he looks at her artwork and says, that's not good. So how easy it is for them to compare, for them to be able to place themselves in roles, right? And then our kids place, our, place themselves in roles too. They're easily noticing how good they are at certain things, which is great, but how not good they are at other things, right? So it's not helpful for us as parents to already place more responsibility or more uh, head games on them by, by encouraging that sort of feeling like, oh, well, he's the most responsible one, therefore he's always going to do the, the same stuff, right? Question for Ms. Kim. And how about the role of them telling their other sibling what to do? So they think that they're the parents in the role of the relationship. Right? <laughs> no, I, that's never happened in my house, Kathy. <laughs> wow, what are you doing at home? Not, not specifically, but I'll just share with you what, what I do, because I, I often do have the oldest have more responsibility. I, I mean, obviously, as a nine-year-old, she can do a few more things. So it's not, not that I... Uh, anyway, so sure, I mean, obviously, we, we do have certain things that older children might be able to do. Uh, when, for, in my example, and, and you can share a different one, uh, but in the example that I have, when my daughter who is often the more responsible one helping us with chores or helping us with something, getting her sister ready for school, when she gets frustrated and says, well, he's not doing what I told him to. <laughs> that didn't mean for you to always take that role. It's just if I specifically ask you to help me with something, then I, then I expect you to help me with something. If I don't ask you, then you can't automatically assume that your brother or your sister are going to follow your directions every single time. That's my conversation. Is there anything that you do, Kathy, with your situation? Uh, it's more of, you know, the role of whose job is it to tell the brother what to do, right? Yeah. So, you know, can you tell me that he's not working the way he's supposed to be sleeping, and I will let him know what his expectations are. Exactly. It's not your expectation, it's my expectation. Yeah. So, you know, we've had to draw the family line of, you know, mom, dad, <laughs> here's your sibling, is here, sibling is here. you're not over the brother, you're not over the brother, you're over and we are going to work his way. <laughs> so he gets confused on what his role is in the family. Yes. Because he's just like, I just want to help him. Like, now I have to do this and now you. So no. <laughs> that doesn't help. Yeah. No, it, it is a lot of, <laughs> parenting is all about conversations and teachable, teachable moments, right? So even though we may teach our kids one time and have a conversation and feel like it really stuck, <laughs> We might be having the same conversation seven more times that week, right? So it, it is very much about continu continuing and being consistent with that. Again, not, not placing the kids in the roles that so often is easy for us. I, I have a different case of Kathy, but sometimes it's not just telling them, like, don't do this or, or that. My oldest daughter is 
pretty emotional and she's pretty flexible. So anything that comes, she's like, everything's a drama. Oh, she's so disappointed. <laughs> she's a And the little one, she's really like relaxed. And she says, don't worry. It's not a big deal. Relax. So all the kids want to complain like, what is she telling me? She doesn't know what I'm feeling like. Why is she not feeling bad and I feeling bad? Like yeah. confronting like those two feelings, she gets really upset because she's like her younger sister maybe 